Welcome to this lecture today. Today we're going to talk about the GF, GGF beta signaling pathway. Here's some literature. And um, we have four kinds of signal molecules. We have cytokines, which, which is a general definition for signals that are transduced between cells. And through history, they first described peptides cycling through the blood and immune system, which induce proliferation. Then we have growth factors, which were found after the cytokines, and uh, they induce cell growth. <coughs> and um, we have chemokines, which are cytokines who induce chemo attraction. And we have hormones, which are peptides that act in an endocrine matter. <coughs> Excuse me. So these classical cytokines are related to blood cells and immune system. They have non-enzyme containing receptors. And we have, uh, for example, the interleukin growth hormones and interferons. And then we have again classical growth factors, which support mainly somatic cell interaction. And they have enzyme linked receptors. For example, we have the epidermal growth factor and um, the transformer growth factor beta, which super family, which we are talking uh, about right now. The receptor of TGF beta superfamily receptors are receptors which have a serine threonine kinase domain. There are four different families. We have the TGF beta family, the BMP or GDF family, GDNF family, and activins and inhibins. The ligands again uh, are forming homodimers and of TGF beta and from BMP the ligands from hetero or homodimers. Um, the um, lig ligand is uh, presented here. We have target information domain, we have stabilization domain and we have a receptor binding domain. However, there is ligands um, synthesized. Um, well, we, first of all, we have a single ligand and they dimerize with the help of the protein furin and uh, sulfide bridges uh, here and here. They form a small latent complex, which is stabilized by the molecule uh, structure itself. And this molecule here then binds to a larger complex, and then it's called the large latent complex. Um, and this thing here is called the GBT complex, which, uh, which uh, the small complex binds to. And then they are secreted out of the cell. Um, the activation of TFG beta superfamily ligands um, or more receptors. We have this, um, we have this uh, large latent complex here. And when the target cell is in need for the ligand, it will express proteases which cut off the ligand out of this uh, LLC. And then the ligand can bind to the receptor here. So let's talk about the activation of serine threonine kinase receptors. Um, in absence of the ligand, we have two receptors. We have type 2 receptors and type 1 receptors. Type 2 receptor is always active and has this serine threonine kinase domain here. And um, type 1 needs to be activated by a ligand. This uh, receptor is, is not active. So when the ligand here binds, um, these two receptors form a complex. And the kinase domain from receptor 2 phosphorylates the serine rich domain of receptor 1 here. Uh, the phosphorylated serine domains then act as docking station for other molecules, which are called SMUT molecules. And um, the SMUT molecules here, they are brought by a molecule which is called SARA, which is helping them to come to the right place uh, to the receptor. So the phosphorylated serine domain then acts as a docking station for MH1 here. And the MH2 gets phosphorylated by the kinase domain of receptor 1. And um, then 
the smart is activated and transports the signal inside the cell. The uh, binding between uh, the smuts and the Sarah is uh, is loose now. Sarah goes into the cell and we have an activated smart molecule right here. Uh, smuts are messenger molecules and uh, there are three kinds of smuts. Uh, the R-smut, the Co-smut and the I-smut. And each of those smuts uh, contain an MH1 domain, which um, which uh, tells the smut to go into the nucleus. It's a localization signal region, where it has a nucleus localization signal region, which tells the molecule where to go into the nucleus. And then we have... Um, oh, I'm sorry. Then we have this nucleus exit signal again on the co-smuts. And the uh, smuts uh, are missing this MH1 um, domain, and this leads to an inhibition of the of the signal, because the smut messenger cannot be transported through the nucleus. Um, smuts are activated by phosphorylation and transduce the signal from the receptor to the nucleus. Example for smuts are smut one, two, three, five, and eight. smuts and cosmuts are always dimerizing. And um, here we have the SMUT4 as example. And this tells the, the SMUT to leave the nucleus again. That's why it's every dimer of SMUTs has a, a SMUT4. And the R SMUT, as I said, is an inhibi inhibitor of the signal. And examples, therefore, are 6 and 7. Let's make this more clear here. Um, we have the TGF beta receptor or the BMP receptor, both are receptors of the TGF beta superfamily. And then we have the SMUTs here. Um, they go to the activated receptor, are activated by phosphorylation, and then um, they bind the SMUT4, which is this um, nucleus exit uh, signal, so to say. And um, then they are, they, in the nucleus they start uh, different processes which, for example, can lead to uh, DNA transcription and translation. I hope this was somehow clear. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. I hope you have a wonderful day and goodbye. <music>